Hey, I'm Trey, and I have another serial killer story for you. You should stick around to the end of the story so you can find out what was this killer's motivation. Life is all about choices, and we decide every day to make decisions that could get us killed. I like to read about stories that remind me to be vigilant when it comes to protecting myself and my family from a world filled with serial killers. If you're interested in stories like these, then hit the subscribe button to this channel, also the notification button, so you can be reminded of new content I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Also, you can hit the like button if you enjoy it. I'd also appreciate your comments in the comments section. I'd love some feedback on the video and or the channel. Well, if you're ready for the story, let's get started. In the country of the Czech Republic and in the town of Chakov, a man by the name of Francis Hepner owned the large cottage in which he lived there with his Russian girlfriend whose name was now provided. From time to time, Francis would rent out the adjacent cottage that he owned. One day, they both suddenly just disappeared. No one was aware of what happened to the couple. Although they had plenty of friends in the area, no one could figure out what happened. The friends believed that something must have happened because they would have told them about any plans to leave or move from the general area. Just like this, many victims, who were mostly men, disappeared over the span of several years without a trace. A few bodies were initially located, but nothing led the police to believe that a serial killer had been working within their community. The victims were from all different walks of life. The police had no leads at the time or witnesses. The authorities could not prove that many of the missing people were dead or alive. Many of these cases were treated by the authorities as if the victims had just decided to leave the area one day, not tell any of their family or close friends. I guess that's one way for the police to treat a missing person case. Act like they're not missing and they will come back. This left a lot of family members and friends frustrated with the police due to their perceived lack of effort in locating any of them. Over the course of several years, many other people would disappear in various ways. In July of 1992, a taxi cab driver by the name of Vladimir Stamat was operating his vehicle, leaving the city of Prague with an unidentified passenger heading to the town of Chekhov. The body of the man was found a year later inside of a large septic tank. Although this was an obvious homicide, the police had no witnesses or leads to follow. The chemicals in the tank accelerated the decomposition of the body. This rendered an autopsy useless in determining the cause of death for the taxi cab driver. In July of 1992, a businessman by the name of Vaclav Horky, who happened to be a traveling businessman near the town of Chekhov, also disappeared. A relative reported his absence to the authorities. The police had no leads or witnesses, but several people did observe the missing man's unique vehicle being operated by an unidentified man in the area. No description of the stranger was initially provided. In May of 1993, a single man named Joseph Suchnik resided in the same general area where the other missing people vanished. He placed an advertisement in a dating newspaper looking for an acquaintance. The type of acquaintance that Joseph was referring to was not provided, but this was definitely before the internet. After several days of concern from close family members, the police were notified. A well-being check was done at the man's residence and the apartment appeared ransacked. Everything appeared to have been searched through and many large objects were moved to one side of the room. It's as if room was being made in order to move some of the missing furniture out of the house. Police found no leads or witnesses at the time. In October of the same year, the local pond had been drained of water for an unexplained reason. When this was done, the body of Joseph was located at the bottom. Due to the state of decomposition, no cause of death could be determined, so it was initially believed to have been accidental. In November of 1993, a man by the name of Clive Dolby who was known to the community as a porn videotape retail distributor, vanished. Close friends became concerned of his disappearance and went to search for him. His friends could not find him at his place of business or at his residence. Police were notified of this after several days of concern. The authorities responded to his apartment and breached entry. Within the apartment, the deceased body of the dog was located on his bed hog tied. The victim's arms, legs, and neck were tied together in a knot. An autopsy was completed and it was determined that he was likely strangled to death while he was rendered helpless by the ropes. The apartment also seemed to have been searched and ransacked by the killer. March of 1994, an unidentified man walked into a rental car agency 
That same man then requested to speak to the manager. The stranger met with the assistant manager by the name of Peter Magladon, the owner, Peter Kaderna, and the visiting friend by the name of Jerry Samarad. The stranger then produced a handgun and rope, then instructed each victim to tie one another up with that rope. The stranger then tied each victim together by their necks and legs, then stacked them on top of one another. The strange method he used to tie them up caused two of the victims, the two Peters, to strangle themselves with their own body weight. The stranger then robbed the store of its proceeds. The surviving victim, Jerry, was able to break free of his bonds and notify the police. Jerry was able to provide the police with a partial description of the stranger. The stranger was located and identified as Ivan Rubal. Francesc Hepner had disappeared along with his Russian girlfriend whose name was not provided. It was believed that Ivan killed both Francesc and his girlfriend, then disposed of their bodies. This was done to rob them of their possessions and live rent free in their cottage. When close friends and family would come by and ask Ivan of their family's whereabouts, he would tell them that they had just left and didn't tell him anything. The family and friends found it strange that Ivan was utilizing Francesc's vehicle and began to sell their stolen furniture in front of their yard. The taxi cab driver by the name of Vladimir Stranod had picked up Ivan from Prague the same day that he was last seen alive. Police believed that Ivan had a strong nexus to all the missing persons like these. The authorities were reluctant to charge Ivan for the homicides of all the victims because no bodies were found. He was eventually charged for the store robbery and the deaths of the two victims stemming from it. While waiting for his trial date, the judge mistakenly released him out of prison. That's not a mistake, that's just dumb. While out of prison, Ivan threatened witnesses, he threatened the jury, and he threatened the prison staff. He was remanded back to jail until trial. During the trial, Ivan was found guilty and given a life sentence. While in prison, a psychiatric evaluation was completed. It was determined that Ivan believed in mysticism and the occult. This gave him the justification and, and latitude to commit these crimes he committed. It was believed that Ivan did not think his crimes are wrong based on the beliefs of the occult. Well, I hope you enjoyed this story. If so, hit the like button, subscribe, and also notification button so you can be reminded of new content that I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Also, please leave your comments in the comment section because I'm always looking forward to getting some feedback. God bless and stay safe.